this is pretty cool here. Did anyone else go through a reactionary anti-SJW phase from 2017 to 2019 and look back on it as extremely embarrassing? This is interesting to me because there absolutely was this wave of anti-SJW content on YouTube uh, during this period. And then the left kind of changed the narrative, right? I don't want to say like we took over, but we, we certainly shifted things back when it comes to the online Overton window. But I think that now we're once again in another anti-SJW period. It's not necessarily the same as the last one. It's not just anti-SJW things. I mean, now it's, you know, gays are groomers, CRT is bad, and, you know, the right is currently dominating here. But this post here, written by this person, kind of gives me hope. And look, not to toot my own horn, but um, he's going to explain what helped him get out of this anti-SJW reactionary phase. So I went through a cringe phase from 2017 to 2019 where I practically worshipped Ben Shapiro and anti-SJW reactionaries online. Looking back, I realized how toxic and vile some of the things and jokes I made were, to the point where I got in trouble for, taking inappropriate, for talking inappropriately around girls and saying racist things. But the worst thing I ever did uh, is when I made a joke where I called two German foreign exchange students at my school Hitler Youth. To this day, I don't know why I fell for such clowns like Ben Shapiro or Steven Crow Crowder. Luckily, I began to doubt these folks online because of my exposure to progressive YouTubers like Kyle from Secular Talk and Mike from The Humanist Report. And in 2020, I fully changed and no longer associated with these reactionary fools. So this to me is... I love these kinds of stories and hearing that I uh, and Kyle, you know, that we played a role in de-radicalizing this person. This is literally like the one thing that I hope to get out of this channel aside from, you know, uh, radicalizing libs. Like I want to de-radicalize right wingers and I want to radicalize libs. That's what I want to do. That's my entire uh, project. Uh, but, you know, it's interesting because. I don't necessarily go out of my way to try to cater to people who might want to shift, uh, but I, I try to be as open and welcoming as I possibly can. But look, I shit on conservatives pretty relentlessly, and so I, I oftentimes wonder if I'm turning people off. But I, I think that just if you're going to make the change, there has to be that initiative yourself. Like you can't just like scream at someone and expect them to change after they get screamed at for a long enough time. There has to be that instinct within them, right? And so just getting exposed to this because you choose to seek it out, I think that's really important. I think that's really important. Um, I think that uh, most are too far gone, so stories like these will be rare. I agree with you. I, I agree with you, unfortunately. I think that a lot of people are too far gone. Um, one of the things that has been the most consistent with my channel is that um, during uh, late 2017, when you know the channel blew up, when I was talking about net neutrality, I had a lot of people who weren't necessarily overtly political or were conservative but cared about net neutrality and they saw that my channel was one of the few that was actually taking this issue seriously and so they tuned in for the net neutrality videos and um, I've heard from, I don't know how many, but a lot of them that said, look, I, I came for net neutrality and then I ended up being convinced to not be a conservative anymore just after watching net neutrality and then watching other videos from you i i think that what you said resonated with me and it made, uh, made sense there was a time where i was talking almost exclusively about net neutrality when it was the number one issue um but you know i started to transition as the issue died down and i started to talk uh, about left issues again and you know that's when people say that, that they kind of like were listening since they, i had their ear with net neutrality then they stayed, and then I ended up convincing them. That, to me, is what I want to hear. There's sort of this appeal to people like myself and Kyle because, you know, we actually do shit on Democrats and Republicans. Not necessarily equally, but we, we shit on both parties. And, you know, there's this sort of draw for people who don't fit into both of those parties, right? But I think that the reason why people like Kyle, people like myself occasionally can draw in people to the left is because when we shit on both parties, it is exclusively from a leftist perspective, right? When I critique Democrats, it's because they're not left enough. They're too right-leaning. And, you know, my, my principles don't change depending on who I'm criticizing. Um, whereas when you see other people like Jimmy Dore, the opposite is happening, right? 
He attracts these right wingers because he shits on Democrats, but then he never criticizes Republicans. He self censors. And then what you do is you implicitly tell your audience that if Democrats are so bad, then of course Republicans, they must be the answer. But for me, my goal is always to make sure that when I tell people what is and isn't bad, I always kind of direct them to, to you know, some sort of a solution, um, whether it's getting involved, running for Congress, volunteering for someone, running for Congress, doing direct action. Like I want them to take my podcast as a jumping off point. So yeah, uh, never browser, but uh, uh, Thunderfoot, Amazing Atheist, Sargon. Uh, yeah, there, there was a really huge um, anti-SJW period. I remember when I've watched The Amazing Atheist for 10 plus years. I watched them since like 2009. Um, and, you know, there was this period where I really kind of fell out from his content because I didn't like the anti-SJW things, but I really value how he's kind of came around and said, look, I, I think that wasn't necessarily great. Like, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I've seen interviews with him, um, you know, one with Progressive Voice, for example, and, you know, him talking about the way that he views that and how now he's kind of trying to uh, change that. I, I just, I really appreciate that because we're all human beings. And that's the thing, you know, this person here, they say that, you know, it's embarrassing. I mean, this is part of the human experience. I, you know, growing up, people are shocked to know that, you know, a giant left cuck like me was an evangelical Christian. I mean, I, I was indoctrinated, so it was drilled into my head at a very, very young age. But I mean, even, even as an adult, you know, I still held on to those beliefs and didn't really shake them until I got an, an education and informed myself. You know, I actually sought out opinions that were different, you know, from my own. I actually sought out evidence to validate my beliefs. And when I found out that they, they couldn't be validated, then I changed. But, you know, there's one thing that I always maintain is that, you know, there's going to be two Vargon people. There's going to be people that can be convinced. But I think that one thing that's consistent is there's got to be the spark. There's got to be the intellectual curiosity. You know, even though I was an evangelical, I was a fundy fuckhead as a young child. I mean, I was a kid, so I, it's embarrassing, right? The photograph of me getting baptized, incredibly cringe and embarrassing. I had bleach blonde hair, by the way. It was the 90s. Uh, but, you know, uh, that's part of life, right? But still, I can recall the conversations that I had with my pastor where I had questions. I was curious, but the answers that he gave me were just fundamentally disappointing. So one of the answers was, or one of the questions rather was, um, there's this discrepancy with God creating the earth and dinosaurs because I'm learning about dinosaurs and that how they existed millions and millions of years ago, but yet God created the earth like 5,000 years ago. That doesn't make sense to me. You know, when, when Adam was created and he named all the animals, supposedly, did he name dinosaurs were was you know the garden of eden populated by dinosaurs and so I, I i said this to my pastor and his answer was well actually yes in fact you know when god created the world he created uh, dinosaurs at the same time and there's actually in the book of job it talks about dinosaur tails being as uh, or not dinosaur tails but the tails of creatures being as big as palm trees and so i thought holy shit okay so i go and i read the book of job nothing i don't get that reference I read it again. Nothing. Like, I scoured this fucking book and I thought, oh my God, my pastor is full of shit. Another thing that really frustrated me, and my pastor actually was condescending to me, and that's how it really was like the seed that led to my atheism, was I asked him, I said, look, I understand that God created the world, okay? But I've got to ask, and I'm like 11, 12 at this time, I've got to ask, who created God? And the pastor could not answer that question. He said, well, God was always around. And my answer was, but there was a beginning at some point. So if God created everything, then it's logical to assume that the God who created everything also had a creator himself. And if that creator had a creator, then who created the creator that created the creator that created God? And so it's like this conundrum, right? And I was explaining this to my pastor and he laughed at me. And he said, <laughs> I think you just need to have more faith. And to me, as brainwashed as I was, I thought, motherfucker. And I didn't think motherfucker, literally. Like, I would never swear because you'd go to hell. But in my head, I thought, okay, you don't have an answer. You literally do not have an answer. And that to me isn't acceptable because I am endlessly curious. I'm endlessly curious. And I've always been a curious person, 
Like as a kid, you know, I was very much into learning about the history of dinosaurs. You know, as a young adult, I was fascinated with astronomy, fascinated with it. Um, so I, I liked science and it was kind of like this elusive thing because as a Christian, you know, you kind of have to be a science denier, at least it's drilled into your brain. And so, you know, my, my thought, and this may be projection, right? My thought is that, well, since there was that spark there, that intellectual curiosity there, I feel like that has to exist in order for there to be, you know, a change. There has to be fertile ground. And so with a lot of people like this, I think that even through this anti-SJW phase, I think that this person probably still was thinking, okay, maybe I like these reactionary memes because they're funny. Maybe I like Ben Shapiro because he's triggering the libs. But at the end of the day, that doesn't satisfy me intellectually, right? And so the people who get converted, who aren't too far gone, who, you know, join the humanist report for net neutrality and end up, end up being converted into leftism, I think that they always kind of had that capacity to change in them, right? If somebody finds a Kyle video because, you know, that they... Uh, he came up in the algorithm and then they stay and they watch more videos and they slowly but surely become a leftist. I think that they probably already had to be predisposed to really question themselves, to be more introspective. But there are some people who I think are just not introspective at all, who will never question their own beliefs. And even today, like I'm very confident in my views. Um, and I feel like I've, I've perfected my own ideology and belief system. But at the end of the day, I still want to make sure that I uh, have a system that can be scrutinized, that holds up, that I'm constantly fact-checking myself because, um, like, I, I feel like just as a human being, how could you not want to search for the truth, like the objective truth, just about everything, life, the origin of existence? How could you not want that, right? And there are some people who just don't think about it. I've met people who couldn't care less about, like, the Big Bang and where we all came from, who don't think that our existence right now is a mystery. And to me, that's so perplexing. Like, how could you not just, like the world is so, the universe is so mysterious. How could you not think about how bizarre everything is? Like the Big Bang, we, you know, everything started like that. You know, how, why do we exist? Uh, questions that we'll never have answers to. But I mean, the continual pursuit of knowledge is something that I feel like it, it's, it's got to be a trait of most people, but I feel like some people just don't don't care. They shut their brains off. But, you know, I maintain that there's got to be that spark there to ignite the flame. But either way, it's really cool when people say things like this and, you know, they, they credit me as part of the reason why they decided to, um, to change. You know, I, I think that they should give themselves credit too because, you know, if they hadn't sought out alternative views, then they would have never changed. But, um... Yeah, I think this is really cool. And I just uh, I wanted to share this. Shout out to Competitive Bid uh, 7071. I really appreciate you posting this. You know, it it, uh, it uh, affirms that, you know, what I'm doing is having an impact. You know, maybe I'm imperfect, but I'm certainly trying. And, you know, that effort is paying off at least minimally, right? Have you seen the video, Betting on Infinity? It really elegantly demonstrates one of the biggest logical problems with religion, which one you choose is completely arbitrary based on where you were born. Exactly. And that's the thing, right? That's one thing that also got me is, you know, my pastor would tell me, um, you know, even if uh, we're wrong and God is, uh, you know, not real, there's, there's nothing to lose by being religious. And I would argue there is because being religious made me miserable. I had to give up everything. I couldn't play with Pokemon cards. I had to get rid of video games like Halo. Um, but on top of that, that, that logic is flawed because by that logic, you know, if, oh, well, you have nothing to lose, so you might as well accept Jesus Christ into your heart. Okay, well, what about the other thousands of gods? Don't you have to subscribe to every single religion to make sure that you choose the right God? I mean, isn't it a coincidence that you happen to be born in the United States where Christianity is prominent? And that's the correct one? I mean, as confident as you are, other people who were born in different areas are more confident that their gods are the correct gods. So it's such an arrogant stance to take, and religious logic is just inherently flawed. Like, I think that if people use religion for their own personal growth, um, you know, and it helps them, and they're not trying to shove it down my throat, totally fine with it. But in terms of, like, 
I don't know, logic and rational thinking, I, I can't not be an anti-theist because an anti-theist position is the one that's logical. Like religion teaches you literally to um, to dismiss facts. Like I don't, I don't mean to be offensive to anyone, but literally, I mean, it, it literally tells you to don't base your worldview on facts, base it on faith. And I just think that's, no, that's not okay. You have to base it on facts because if you base something on faith, then anything can be real. The tooth fairy could be real. Uh, you know, the Easter bunny can be real, right? Jesus wrote the constitution though. Exactly. More evil has been done in the name of religion. Yeah, Northern, you're absolutely right.